Hi, um, thanks for being here. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, the Vehicle Logs Events and Properties Parser. It's another uh, little tool from the XLEAP family that I've been working with Geraldine Bly. And the focus of this tool is to uh, be able to parse extractions from vehicles, from cars, trucks, and the like. So let's, uh, let's uh, check it out and I'm gonna show you a little bit of how uh, the tool works and runs. So if you're familiar with um, the other tooling um, in Python that the community has put out, um, it's, it follows the same format. So I have here a, a forensic uh, extraction, uh, logical extraction from a, uh, a Ford uh, Sync Generation 3 infotainment system. And you can see here all the artifacts that it parses. Uh, right now it's, it says four there, but the one of the categories has like six or seven uh, subcategories within it. So we're gonna uh, see a few. So just select your uh, logical extraction, the output where report is gonna go, select your artifacts, in this case all, and just hit process. And just give it a few minutes and it should give you some, all the, uh, some output that we will uh, review. You can see there that one of the artifacts and a couple of sub artifacts that didn't find any data the wrong time and the report is ready so when you press on you know the, the report is ready you can see here on the left all the artifacts that are responsive bluetooth sqlite contacts for different devices and on the device details you can see information from you know the vehicle that you are you know um, working on here's the script run log what you saw on the screen it was running and then you see here all the files that were parsed Okay, so let's look at Bluetooth devices. You have here, for example, different phones that have been connected to that vehicle with different information about them. Here you got the SQLite contacts for, for these uh, devices that allowed um, the list to pass over. Here is the geolocation. Notice how uh, large entries, a lot of detail on how many items uh, you can work with. So um, just keep that in mind um, when you're trying to map that out mapping them all in one go might not be a good idea so we'll discuss that in a second the the uh, how many miles uh, the car has uh, traveled uh, the temperature on the outside of the vehicle at different times and something I want to point out is the uh, how easy it is to backtrack all this information you see the path where the data was you know was at and in this case what type of log had it really specifically so let's look at the report um, in, in inside the report in more detail beyond the HTML. You see here are the HTML files that we reviewed. And let's go to the uh, temp folder. So the temp folder, when you ex do an extraction, let's say from a logical extraction from a zip file, it will pull out the specific files that it parsed. So now you can do like, you know, you know, eyeball it yourself. You can actually go to the actual source data and look at it yourself with other tools or, or by hand, which I think is pretty, pretty convenient. You don't have to hunt down, hunt down those uh, those uh, source source data. It's right there for you. There's also uh, tab separated value uh, text files, so you can import this into the most forensic of tools, which is Excel, <laughs> um, LibreOffice, you know, any tool, spreadsheet. You can give it to your analysts, and you can you know, slice it and slice it and dice it uh, as you as you desire, at your heart's content. Okay. Um, if we look here now. To the timeline uh, folder, you'll see here a, a database called TL for timeline. And if you hit browse data, for example, you'll see there uh, all the artifacts when I sort them by time and all the artifacts, uh, how they relate to each other. For example, you see the speed being there uh, recorded of the car, how many miles uh, the vehicle traveled. So if you're interested in a particular set of time, you can then, it's as simple as filtering just for the day, hour, minute that you're interested in and see how what the vehicle was doing. You can see, for example, here, as the car is moving, how the vehicle, how the speed increases or decreases. There's a temperature readings in between and the like. So it's pretty useful to see it in that timeline fashion, all the artifacts, how they relate to each other. Even the KML exports, there's a big KML with all the, all the your location points, but if you feed that file to your Google Maps application, it's gonna crash, it's too big. So what I suggest you do is open the lat-long uh, SQLite database and select for the time periods that you care about, okay? In this case, I'm selecting uh, this, this specific day. It has a little bit, you know, like almost 3,000 
uh, entries. Notice here that I select the proper uh, field separators that um, Google Maps or Google, I, sh I should say, uh, Google Earth likes. I'm gonna name it test data since you know, we're showing this as, as a test, okay? And now the only thing you have to do is you have to open your Google Earth and import that text file, all right? And notice that it will tell me that, uh, give, give, give me a complaint because it'll say it's like, you know, too many entries in one go. And that's what I'm saying, try to import everything like that 29 megabyte file is gonna crash your Google Earth Pro, right? So do selections of the different time periods that you're interested in, if you're using this tool. All right, notice here that um, latitude is gonna be that second column and longitude that third column. So I did it like that, so it matches latitude, longitude, as you see here in the app. So the output of the database, it's latitude, longitude order, okay? Here, it's complaining, see, because it has, you know, more than 2,500, but, you know, we have 2,800. So it's not a big of a, that big uh, of a difference. So I'm gonna import them all, okay? Do I apply a template? No, I'm okay with the defaults, uh, you know, little icons and stuff that it has. So let's see how it looks. Look at that. Look how nice. It has a lot of detail on on those geolocation points. And you see the vehicle leaving a facility um, and then driving over and then coming to this place and then turning back around, doing a U-turn and going back around. Okay information that the vehicle has. So if you press any of these uh, points, you can see there the timestamp and the actual geolocation points as, as described. So super useful way of looking at the data, okay? Now, I got, I'm gonna show you now a few screenshots of the tool working for artifacts that I cannot show you the actual output, but at least you can see the format. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's data from a case, so I cannot share it. But I, I just want you to look at the format of the report. So let's start with the access, access point list. So uh, some vehicles, some four vehicles, will keep track of whatever access points it comes across. So you'll see the BSSID, right, and the SSID, pretty much the MAC address of that device, the name of the device, the strength of that signal and where is it? Where is that located in which log, right? Which is super useful. Um, let's look at device details here. Let me open it real quick. Uh, where is it? There we go. So you see here, for example, this vehicle that I'm examining, you'll see uh, the fuel level, the ignition state, is the navigation is turned on or off, you know, the, the, the how many miles has. As, uh, uh, as the vehicle traversed the platform in regards to what type of sync generation it has on the infotainment system, the VIN from different locations, and the firmware number. I mean, this could be, a, depending on the type of vehicle, we can have a lot of information that will be placed here in the device details section, okay? Really easy to access on this tab when your report opens. Um, the vehicles can also keep track of the vehicle road speed limits, which will tell you here, will tell you the timestamp, the road you were traveling, you know, let's say you know, Interstate 4, right, at whatever location, and the speed limit for it, okay? And again, a lot of details in regards to that. So really useful to look at this and have an idea where the vehicle was at at what time, uh, really easy. And then we have here the transmission status report, which tells you if the vehicle is in Neutral, reverse, parking, going back and forth, whatever it's doing, you can see it there. Super useful. And I have here another report, which is the vehicle info report. It has a lot of information. Uh, some of that I used to I used it to populate the devices tab, but if you want more detail, like you know ES ESN number, right? So it's there, whatever for whatever that is used. <laughs> the RAM size, platform I have already. I, I, I pulled it from here. And from other places, right? So, pretty much this is VLeap uh, again. Um, just another uh, tool in your toolkit. It's Python based, as said previously. And if you have a extraction, you can go forward. Um, so these extractions, I sub note that tend to be, at least for these vehicles, the Ford ones, Q and X file systems. So I have a, another video that you can you know, look here. I'm gonna put it in the in the in this video's description, where it shows you how you can manage QNX uh, file systems if your forensic tool 
or preview tool doesn't does not recognize those partitions so I have a video that shows you how to do that again thank you for watching and you can reach out to me through here or Twitter or uh, through my email I'm more than glad to help at any time thank you so much and uh, have a nice day